from La La Land now, Real Life's Tim Estilos has the story of Hollywood's mystery woman. 25 years ago, millionaire sportsman Howard Hughes landed at New York's Floyd Bennett Field just four hours and 20 minutes after leaving Miami. A new record for the 1,200-mile hop. He was dashing, debonair, and one of the world's richest men. Howard Hughes and his legendary exploits were the envy of millions. But Howard's conquests weren't just limited to the skies and the boardroom. Plenty of famous Hollywood women with names like Davis and Hepburn and Harlow fell under his spell in the bedroom as well. You know, over the years, Howard Hughes was pretty successful in getting just about any beautiful woman he wanted in Hollywood. But the one who made perhaps the deepest and most lifelong impression on him was a cute 18-year-old little starlet whose career was just starting to take off. And her name was Terry Moore. One thing, we were very passionate <laughs> together. I mean, we, we really had uh, a great chemistry. I would say uh, that that was the most important, one of the most important things, and uh, I had never felt that way about anybody before. That's because when Terry Moore met Howard Hughes, she was just a naive and innocent little starlet whose Hollywood career was just beginning to blossom. Terry appeared steadily as a magazine cover girl in the late 1940s, and then she went to the silver screen, where she even received an Academy Award nomination. But it was one of her first roles as a sweet-faced young girl in a film called The Return of October that caught the eye of the legendary Howard Hughes. And in this movie, I play a girl who lives with my Uncle Willie, who's always said to me, Honey, if I die, I swear I'll come back as a horse and win the Kentucky Derby. Well, when Howard saw this movie, he fell in love with me. He said, I'm going to marry that girl. One, because he always felt that he was an orphan because he lost both his parents in his teens. And second, he liked my naivete. He said he was the, I was the only girl he'd ever seen who he believed, <laughs> believed her unc this racehorse was her uncle. But for Terry, it wasn't an immediate attraction. She was only 18. Hughes was 43. And Terry was already dating someone else. But the persistent Howard kept trying. And slowly, I began to like him a little bit. But then what happened, I found myself rushing home from my dates to talk to Howard. And we would talk from about 12 midnight until 4 in the morning. And I slowly fell in love with him and, and loved him all my life. With a reputation as a well-known womanizer, it seemed Howard's sights were set on just adding another naive starlet to his conquest. But Terry wasn't quite as naive as she looked. He even said that only God could marry us and took me us up on a hill and said, now we're married, and we took vows together. And he started driving towards the Beverly Hills, and I said, a hotel. And I said, uh-uh, you know, we may be married that way, but, you know, not uh, as far as the law go goes, and, and my parents will not understand that until you show them a paper. And it wasn't long before Howard also began to think marriage might not be a bad idea, and he finally offered to take care of Terry. I mean, you sure get stories quick. And remember you warned me against Dick Contino and look at the scandal he got in. Well, and that isn't all. What? Well, I mean, who the hell selected Bob Parrish? Me. Why don't you decide you need somebody to take care of you? Why don't you let me have the job? Oh, how do you want it? You mean that, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I love you. You can have the job. We were not together physically and, until I did become his wife. And that's, what I think, the, really the reason that he uh, uh, married me. Terry's memories of her years with Howard are fond ones. Despite their age difference, this famous May-December couple shared a common bond. And we were like two kids together. We had a lot of fun together. And he was, you know, dying to show me. He, he was seeing life again through my eyes. I mean, when, when I would see a new place, when he'd take me for lunch for the Grand Canyon and take off the blindfold and there was the Grand Canyon, he'd see the thrill. It was, it was like for him happening for the first time again. I think that I was his child, his bride, his everything, you know, that he'd ever wanted. Why was your marriage kept a secret for so long? It ended up that he wanted to let it be known, and I wouldn't. And, and uh, he would get mad at me. Marriage hurt your career at that time. And I played in all these animal pictures, and I was sort of the perennial virgin. And, uh, you know, this little girl in all these animal pictures just didn't go with Howard Hughes. <laughs> So I, and I love my career, and I had been an actress since I was 11 years old, and uh, 
he was not going to interfere with that. But eventually, Howard's way with other women in Hollywood got the best of him. One morning I woke up and uh, he wasn't next to me and it came in my mind who he was with. And it was a person, it was a big star in my family. Everybody had always been faithful to one another. There, there weren't any divorces or anything and I just could not take that. And eight years after they were married, young Mrs. Hughes decided to call it quits. Yet despite their breakup, Terry has written a book to ensure the truth is remembered about her former love, the first true love between the beauty and the billionaire. I think puppy love is the greatest love in the whole world. I think it's the strongest. Oh, it, you get ties later on in life when you go through all of that. But, but they're, they're, it's the only time you love with, where you don't hold back. Was Howard the love of your life? I said in the first book, it is true. I loved him then, I love him now, and I will always love him. Yes, because I've never allowed myself to love that way again.